Hello, test one two. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, test one two. Hello, test one two. Hello. I have, but I still have to. Hello, test one, two, three. Uh, all right, everyone, uh, let's get started. Uh, so everyone can get a seat uh, and we can go ahead. So a little bit behind. So guys, thank you so much for being here today. Um, I think, I hope you guys are having a, a great conference. How many of you guys are first time Drupal call? First timers? All right, cool. So I hope you guys are having a great conference, especially you guys for the first time, uh, specific about this track. Uh, I don't know if you guys noticed, but the business and strategy track, they, uh, the content track, uh, the track chairs, they managed to put together a good set of sessions, I believe, and they are well synced up with one another. 
so I think you guys are going to be enjoying quite a lot following up the track so if you can do so there are all the sessions are kind of related to each, to each one so there's another one related to selling to enterprise I think on Thursday there's some other challenges associated to selling to large organizations in the different sessions so I really recommend you guys uh, to join those other, those other sessions too um, I'm here today to talk a little bit about, about that, to talk about what are the challenges that I, myself, within my company, have been facing selling Drupal to such organizations, right? So there's the word large here. I'm going to be spending a little bit of time working on that, why large enterprise and why, what is enterprise. Touch base a little bit about, a little bit about uh, web experience management, something that is coming out or has come out already in some uh, sale, sales opportunities that I have worked on and what I've done so far to try to win those battles uh, and what are the battles that I lost and what, what was the reason for that. So a little bit about myself, uh, Felipe Rubi, I'm a chief architect with ECINT. I'm responsible for the Drupal practice uh, for the company. Been working with Drupal for the past four years. Um, I live, I'm, I'm Brazilian actually, but I've been living in the US for the past four years but looking at Drupal within my organization globally. So any opportunity in US or South America or even here in Europe. So that's where I'm get, I get involved. And now most, uh, not so much into the details of the, the projects or delivering so much projects, but more involved on, on the pre-sales team, helping my organization to get into different, uh, getting different business with using Drupal. Um, forgot to mention, we, uh, I have been personally worked uh, with two different uh, farm organizations, Fortune 50, 50 uh, organizations that are using Drupal. And one of them I was personally involved on helping them decide, supporting them on looking to Drupal and uh, the other option for CMS and helping them decide to choose Drupal uh, along with, uh, with the other one, uh, helping different groups actually buy in into Drupal. So even though you manage to sell Drupal for large organizations such as the ones I'm going to be speaking today, uh, still once you're, you broke that barrier, you still have to convince other groups within the organization. So it's not just one time thing, you still have to continue selling, the, the selling Drupal within the organization, especially the ones that are global. So you still have the same challenge over and over and over. So even for the first organization that we have been working, every now and then there's one specific group that is not using Drupal yet and we are called to help them to show the benefits of using Drupal and not the other options that uh, sometimes they, they are faced to. To give some context uh, about CINT, the company that I work for, we are about uh, 1,600 employees now, headquarters in Brazil, but development centers across uh, Brazil, Argentina, and also China. So we are, we're supporting our global customers with that model, doing what we call near shore. Uh, and that applies quite a lot for Drupal. So that's our Drupal page, our, our CINT page on Drupal.org. Um, and we've, been, we've built about 400 websites, both Drupal 6 and 7, built or maintained those websites, uh, again, for those two organizations mostly, and across the globe, different, different locations, uh, and internationalization, et cetera. So um, it's kind of, not so much news, but uh, Drupal has been promoted to that enterprise level, right? And that actually has been, been quite a few time. Uh, it's been quite a few years now, a couple of years, that we can tell that Drupal has officially broke that barrier and actually been adopted by, by organizations, by enterprise. I think everyone would agree with that. So Drupal has become a major player on enterprises. But uh, also, I think we went to another level, those large enterprises, which I'm going to be spending some time here today, but enterprises that have specific characteristics, specific demands and requirements, they are global. Uh, so uh, I think Drupal is, is out there at that level. As a, as, and also, as you guys could see in Dries' uh, keynote this morning, that's something that we as a community we wanted to do. We feel like uh, if we want to stay uh, representative or to, to mean something on, on the CMS area, we wanted to be part of the dominant options that are there, out there, right? So one or two or three options, and Drupal wants to be the one that's out there in the top, th top three list. So uh, I think it's very beneficial for us if we still fight for con conquering those large organizations to buy into Drupal and use Drupal 
not only because of that to be the dominant platform, but uh, based on the requirements that we hear from those organizations, you, you can consider them as a lot of small companies. So every, small, every group within the organization, every brand or department may have different requirements. So they will challenge us as a shop, as a Drupal shop, to, to really stress the capabilities of Drupal and to think different and to do things better and then move those things back to the community. So I really believe that it makes us as a community, makes us better, makes us stronger. So I think it's a good fight that we wanted to, to go after. But the fight now has, moved, has been moved to a different arena, right? Uh, whereas we are used to compete with uh, uh, blogging tools or, or, or small CMSs, we're, we're, we're fighting with different giants. We're, we're, it's a different game when we're specifically when you're selling to those organizations, right? And, uh, and that's what I, what I wanted to share, my experience when fighting those guys in that different arena sometimes unfair uh, because in one side is basically my organization or, or you guys you guys provide Drupal services trying to pitch those large enterprises with your Drupal sales team most of the time is a technical architect along with the sales with the sales guy maybe a senior developer but still it's your Drupal sales team versus the other sales team the proprietary vendors uh, that are like Oracle, Adobe, that huge sales team, professional ones, highly trained, well prepared, and they are we're both battling for uh, for that enterprise, right? And what I've learned in the past few years is that what we what worked in the past is not working so much anymore, right? So like I said, we used to pitch organizations, small enterprise or or not so much an enterprise. But we would go with the speech around, well, it's not a blogging tool. We're talking about something much more capable, like Drupal as a CMF, as a framer. Uh, so it's not just comparing with the blogging tool. It's not so much about just being open source, just being free. So when you're talking to those large organizations, not, of course, it's important, but it's not the big part of the discussion. So it's a different game. And, uh, and on the other side, though, you see those, uh, the, the competitors they are working uh, hard. They are themselves uh, an enterprise, some of them, and uh, they could really use Drupal internally if the case. We can try to pitch Drupal for them. But it's still, sometimes you feel like uh, you are the small guy, and uh, those guys, they have everything. They have all the weapons during that, that period to try to, to sell Drupal. And what we wanted to do, and I think you guys all here are interested to do, is to continue to win in those fights. I mean, we're, we're winning more and more fights, like I said, I helped this organization uh, about a year and a half ago to choose a Drupal over uh, Oracle Fatwire. I just recently helped another organization, still finalizing the process, back in South America to again, to choose Drupal versus Oracle in the same case. So uh, we wanted to continue winning those battles with those organizations. But uh, what we can do to continue winning those, what we could be realistic about when losing those battles, right? And then just realize that we, we lost that and uh, get ready for the next one. Because we know they're working on their own their labs, right? They, we know they have been doing things to really, so Drupal started to, to, to cause some noise for them, even more than that, right? So we're competing against them directly. So they are doing their homework. They're putting, they're putting together the sales team, they're getting them trained. They are coming out with new ideas of how to convince those organizations to use Drupal, or to use, I'm sorry, to use their, their solution. And uh, we got to do something about it too, right? So for example, web experience management, although it's, a, it's something that came out of the market, it's a need from, uh, from the market, from the, from the brand team, the CMO, so from the chief digital officer or the office. Still, those organizations, those proprietary vendor solutions, they're taking advantage of that and selling that uh, within their, their, their solution. So I think that's one of the things that I'm gonna be talking today, that we as a sales team for Drupal, I'm sorry. As a sales team for Drupal, we should be really prepared to discuss, well, if that comes into play during the negotiations or, or during the, the, the sales pitch, what is a web experience management and what we could be, how, how can we achieve that with Drupal as well? So in the end of the day, what I want you guys to leave the session is basically that we need to build up mus muscles uh, within our sales team. And, we, and put together strategies and tactics to try to, to take them down and to win those battles, right? 
for that, what I'm gonna go walking you guys through today is basically, I think the sales team, uh, when pitching for those large organizations, they gotta be ready to know first Drupal strengths, of course, what is really important for Drupal or for that for those organizations. So what are Drupal strengths for the enterprise level? Again, it's not only enough to know what are Drupal strengths for a small, medium corporation, SMBs. So we're talking about knowing what are the requirements for such enterprises and preparing the sales team to really talk about it and show uh, how Drupal is strong on that. But at the same time, be able to talk about Drupal weakness. So we, we see Dries, Dries talking about Drupal weakness in the keynote in Denver. This morning, he also touched base up a little bit about it too. So uh, that will come out. Those guys, the competitors, they will bring that again to your p possible customer. So you gotta be ready to to show what is not so good in Drupal, but is becoming better and, 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 and really be transparent about that too. And that will come, it doesn't matter. People, it's out there, so uh, we gotta be transparent about that and show what we can do to improve those things that maybe are not so good for, for the enterprise. So I'm gonna, we're gonna be talking a little bit about my view on, on the, main, the, the important things on that. Second, I think we should uh, really look at what the organizations are doing, right? Try to be prepared for what are they building up on that labs, on those labs. So uh, really competitive analysis, some, some sort of pre-sales 101, but really, try to do our homework as a sales team for Drupal and understand what they're doing. I'm gonna be just touch base in a few things that I think they are doing and we should, we should be prepared. And with all of that, really train our sales team. So some basic pre-sales, I'm gonna be, again, just pointing it out and uh, see how we can leverage the communities to, to help our sales team uh, be more prepared for, for, such, for such challenge or competitions, right? The first one, so trying to understand and be prepared with Drupal strengths and weakness at the enterprise level. So it's a little bit of tricky here. It's not only knowing Drupal, like I said, but uh, understanding the requirements for the enterprise for those large organizations and preparing your sales pitch, preparing your sales strategy for that. But uh, one of the things that are very important is really understanding the requirements, right? So what are those requirements? So I can really look at Drupal with that perspective. So we gotta focus on the next level. So what are, what are those requirements? What is a large enterprise? It sometimes it's tricky um, to understand as a large, does anyone, does everyone know what are those organizations here? Yeah? Okay. Because uh, I was rehearsing with some folks and some of them didn't know. So by and large for, from Wally -E and uh, Robocop. So uh, large organizations, they, there, there is no such a thing right now in the, in the world to some extent, but uh, it's kind of probably something I'm gonna be talking about here, the, the targets that we're looking at. But uh, could be some debate uh, about what is this large organization, Felipe, that you're talking about. But for sure, one thing we know is what is not a large enterprise, right? Definitely we can't at least take those SMBs out of this. this that's definitely not what we're talking about. But uh, for the purpose of my talk here today, what I think is uh, involved uh, on what is my, this profile of a large organization is it's, uh, usually organizations that are used to this proprietary software model. Uh, organizations that, of course, they have several integration points. They have so many systems or legacy systems. They have so different needs within their different groups that uh, we're talking about integration quite a lot. So it's not just one or quite a few integrations for one portal, we're talking about dozens or hundreds of websites, and each website could have a different integration point or a set of websites for a particular brand could have a different integration point. So integration is key uh, for search organizations and have a plan for that. Uh, several groups involved. So uh, it's, a, it's tricky here, but uh, like I said in the beginning, you have to sell almost 10 times, 20 times Drupal across organizations, not only once. And uh, once you have Drupal working, you still have to continue explaining Drupal or making Drupal, making sure that Drupal is well understood by different groups in the organization with different perspectives on what Drupal can help them. So that's the profile as well of the organizations I'm talking about. Most likely has a global reach. So uh, it's not only US or it's not only uh, European general or, or just German Germany. Uh, it most likely has uh, uh, a different audience in different countries. 
also regulated even so my experience is more around uh, pharmaceutical companies um, and beauty products company uh, large organizations in that area but uh, to some extent media not so much regulated as pharma companies but to some extent they, there is some regulation involved which is key as well because when you start selling Drupal this will come into play about some topics I'm going to be talking here today and we got to be ready to, to, to tell them how we can be compliant or compliant with their organization when developing those websites. How we can make sure that we're going to be implementing the right rules in place from the application level to the hosting level that is going to satisfy your requirements for that industry. And uh, what I've, I keep seeing the profile for those organizations, really they, they come into the Fortune 500 or talk about a certain number of revenue per year. But, uh, but could be a fortune a thousand, I mean, could be different. So a profile of organization most likely would be fitting into those major uh, characteristics here. And what I think we should do as a sales team is really to become a Drupal CMS specialist uh, for those challenges, for, for those requirements, right? Most of them here also applies for SMBs. I'm not saying that, it's not different but it's really we got to have the sales team prepared for those major requirements that I see happening with those uh, organizations. So being, of course, performance. Again, we're going to talk a little bit about this quite soon. Uh, multiple sites management. So there are some challenges involved on how we're going to be managing several websites, right? So again, it's not only one and we just have one IT group or we have different ones in different locations. So there, we got to be ready to, s to sell Drupal or how Drupal can help with the management of those websites. Uh, of course, global reach, localization, internationalization. Uh, as a Drupal shop, we're going to be implementing those websites, so be aware of what is the software development process of that organization. So how Drupal can fit in on that organization model, either being Agile, which I, most of them I have been working already, uh, have already adopted Agile and, and Scrum uh, as being the main methodology. Uh, or if it's still waterfall, how we're going to be able to show that Drupal, developing several websites in Drupal will help them achieve or, or, or really be successful in every step on their process. So there's also a challenge for that too. So we gotta have that ready in our speech. So really get to know the organization before we, we show up. Uh, integration said before, support. So it's really important those guys are used to just one major platform or, or just one major vendor providing support to all of them. And then we're talking about you guys as a Drupal shop, myself providing support or not even that, we're talking about an open source, so what's the, where's the support on that? We're going to spend some time on this. Hosting, of course, uh, they are used to a model where they have their servers and now they have to move to a LAMP platform and there will be challenge around what, are, what is the team that they got to have internally or should they go outside, but uh, what are the risks involved on the data to go outside and some, some other things, right? So hosting is very key as well when we come to that discussion. Uh, and again, the, the groups and how we can, Drupal can offer the best experience for content editors, content authors, <coughs> excuse me, uh, for the final end users, for the IT guys maintaining those sites. So different audience, and they're gonna be within the different groups as well. So we gotta be ready for that in our sales team. I think just some logos of Drupal Enterprise, I mean, not all of those companies, they have sites uh, in those characteristics, I said like, McDonald's, I think they just have uh, one in Australia, but they have the potential to have sites uh, across the globe, right? One per each country, for example. Uh, I think New York Stock Exchange is about 50 to 60. Um, still, there's, there's a bunch of, there's opportunity for those organizations to be at that level as well, if they're not yet. So uh, knowing those requirements, right? Well, that's, that's the profile most likely I'm, I'm talking about here for organizations. So what Drupal can help What's the, the, the I, I just brought two, and I'm sure you guys know quite a few more, but are the, the two strongest things that I saw, that I that keep seeing happening when pitching Drupal, and it's, v, it, and it's very important that we, we know that uh, within our sales team. And I guess the first thing, and I, I think you guys are gonna agree with me, it's about flexibility. I think Drupal, as we pitch, as a content managed framework, is not just a, a final product off the shelf, CMS and that's it. You can customize, but it's going to be very expensive like the other products. I think that one of the beauties of Drupal due to, act to its flexibility is really it's going to mingle in within the organization. It's going to become uh, 
organizational face, just the guy with the face here, but the, the rest is basically becoming the organization. Um, I was having some discussions with, uh, with the customers the other day, and uh, you, even organizations that are competing with each other in the same vertical, in the same market, by using Drupal, they will have different solutions. Uh, so they can, depending on how much they spend on, on configuring Drupal for, for their purpose, they will have different uh, advantages compared to, the, to one another, right? So like I said, uh, two farm organizations that I work with, they have different ways of dealing with Drupal. They have decided different strategies, and that's part of uh, the beauty of Drupal as well, allowing them to use Drupal to try to also be more competitive against competitors or against their, their main competitor. Right, so I think this is very important for a sales team to have this right off the bat and be able to talk about the modules, how we can extend, how we can tweak models or, or evolve models or create new modules or assemble models together as, as features uh, and use distributions for some purpose. So those organizations are going to have different types of sites. They could have community sites, not only brochure sites out there for, for content or for products, but also they could have different uh, purpose for sites. So we could try and have distributions being used as well. So I think we should be very, spend a lot of time on the Drupal flexibility and how Drupal can really be part of your DNA as a large organization. I think it's very key for that. And the second one is really the time to market for Drupal, right? It's the, the famous Google Plus, so just two weeks after, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, after Google released the API or released Google Plus, there was a module ready for that. So, uh, and that's something, again, I, when I talk to those organizations and they ask Oracle or, or SharePoint or, or, so when can I have this? Uh, so there's a new, new social tool out there and I need to integrate with that. My marketing, marketing team, they want to integrate. How long can I have that in place? And they said, well, I'm gonna have to wait for next release or to, to pay for this customization. Next release is going to take four to five months. And when you, see, when you show Drupal that uh, most likely we're going to have a module ready in a couple of weeks, and, or some of your developers can do that in one week, and you're not tied to that product release, that's something really amazing for, for those guys. Really, it was really key for them again. And that's just the heat map in Drupal.org. So if you just took a look and see, take a look and see all the commits happening all the time, so that's part of the community speech, but it, that's part of the innovation rate as well. And we don't see what is happening on the proprietary software, right? So we don't see those commits happening. We know, of course, they're, they're building the new releases, but uh, it's just transparent. We're seeing the product being involved every day, 24 by seven. So um, that's basically innovation. And that's very important for those organizations now. So I, sh I suggest, I mean, for the sales team, I think we should be ready to really expand on that topic too. Those are the two ones, uh, and again, I'm sure there's, you guys have more things when it comes to that, but those are the two things that I see being very key, again, key to win those battles uh, when it comes to those uh, proprietary vendors, CMSs. So we talk about the strengths that I, that I believe are very important for, for such uh, battles. And also, I think we should be aware, like I said, what are the things that are well underway to satisfy those requirements, right? So we, we heard, basically we heard all of them this morning from Dries again, but it's basically content altering capabilities. So we, we I don't know if all guys probably were there and you saw Dries talking about the things that are coming out of that, they're just great. And yes, they became extremely important for large organizations. When I first, uh, so four years ago, first Drupal large deployment for this organization, it wasn't so much important. I mean, the Content authors, they would delegate to either creative agencies or to the Drupal shop itself, myself, my team, to actually do the content management. So it wasn't a big of a deal for them to worry about that. But in the past year, even that organization has been taking over that activity. There is, as you guys, I mean, the reducing uh, staff. So there isn't so much people, there isn't so much creative agents anymore. So they got to optimize their process for content. But also at the same time, uh, the business is asking for more agility for doing those content management, not depending on a content update by an agency in staging and then, and then waiting for that to go to production. So they wanted to do that themselves. So um, the content, the inline editing, all the things that are coming out of Spark are really key for, for Drupal. So it's gonna be in Drupal 7, but it's, it's more like an incubation process for Drupal 8. 
but we can all start using there's an alpha version already of all the modules being in place I think it just released this week or last week an alpha version so I, I recommend we start playing around with that provide feedback and start using uh, so by the time we have a, a stable version start using our projects because it's going to be very key to, to those organizations as well the second one content staging just mentioned that so several websites hundreds right or dozens and uh, how can I move content between environments uh, I'm sorry this is more like the preview I'm sorry this content stage is more about the preview capabilities we all know Drupal preview cap capabilities are not that strong to be able to preview in context right to see what you're, we're gonna be updating at the same in, in the site context so there's the content stage initiative happening I think the last sprint was finishing last week or this week, I guess. So we're gonna have something ready uh, so we can start playing around with a better preview experience for for, the, for those users. And it's part of the, uh, 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 another initiative I'm gonna be talking about. And last uh, is the configuration management, moving between the environments. So even pitching those organizations, yes, I had we had to discuss uh, how we're gonna be tackling that uh, if they decide to use Drupal had to build something custom as several organizations have been doing. But hopefully with this initiative that is coming for Drupal 8, we're not gonna have to, to build different things. We're gonna be able to leverage things in the core and are gonna be part of Drupal uh, as, as uh, right off the bat, right? So it's important for us to know that and, and, and really bring to the table our experience, how we solve those not so strong points in Drupal and also bring that this is coming next version this is coming this version in the next couple of months right so as, as you guys leave the room I'm gonna be pitch, you're gonna be pitching those large organizations you know that spark is out there already you know that content staging the preview is coming out the next couple of weeks too so uh, let's start playing around having the sales team be prepared for that so that's the first thing right so master Drupal strengths and weakness for the enterprise requirements what I wanted to to talk to you guys now is a little bit about uh, my experience on what the competitors are doing, right? So really being prepared for some things that they brought or the customer brought to me that the other vendor was telling them uh, that uh, that we need to be prepared. And I'm, I'm sure you guys all know most of them, if not all. So uh, I think we got to be prepared for that. There's still... There's still the fear, uncertainty, and doubts, uh, things or points still out there. So basically, you guys all know this strategy, a marketing selling strategy of trying to 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 put information out there that's not true or not entirely true. So you can try to convince whatever whoever you need to convince that uh, your product's better, right? So it's a marketing strategy. Uh, so there there are some of them still around for Drupal and open source in general. So even though getting into the large organizations, they are very innovative as well. They are becoming more innovative. But uh, there are some guys from old school still used to what they heard about PHP or about Drupal in the past based on experience. So there's still some of those around. And I think it's, I mean, it wouldn't hurt for us to be prepared to, to answer those. First one, support. So the first thing that they, they will bring is, well, it's open source, it's, it's a community managing that. How, I mean, what's gonna happen if something happens with my site and there's no one, nobody's actually own, owning that, right? There's no one person owning that Drupal, uh, the open source product, it's owned by everybody. So um, I think it's just how we put it. They are used to this, uh, so that's it's basically a, a diagram that I did for, for one of those organizations. They're used to this model where Red is for just one main proprietary vendor that they have, they have been working. So it's providing the database, uh, different components, uh, the, 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 the service bus, uh, even the single sign-on solution. But they also are used to the CMS or whatever is the platform for, for content management. So they're used with this one focal point. And I think there's, there's more to it, but I think we could try and break the, this, the way they're used to see this by bringing what I call uh, an innovation fostering scenario. It's a fancy three words that I put together, but uh, uh, it's really by saying that you as a Drupal provider are gonna be responsible for supporting their sites on top of the platform. 
but it's still having the other vendor managing the rest of the stack, right? And again, back to what I said about the profile, those organizations, they have websites that, yeah, they need to integrate with different components that are being supported by different organizations, right? So we're not going after this. Drupal is really going to focus on, on the web experience. So uh, this is going to leave the over there. And if there's an issue in the integration here, it's going to affect those users out there. They're going to have to bring the two vendors uh, on a call and deal with that. It's not so much of a, it's a little bit of a hassle if I have to bring people and, and, and deal with that. They, they've been through. One of the organizations that I talked, they said, well, we don't want to get so many people on a call to solve an incident, right? So that's why we want to go with just one guy to manage the whole thing. So what I was trying to show them, even though they might be right to some extent on that incident management, uh, I think by having different perspectives and skills and experience on, on a call or in a day-to-day -day developing, developing together the integration, you're going to get more innovation, you're going to get more out of two different teams, two different expertises, two different experience dealing with different customers. So that's what I'm trying to show them that uh, you're going to get the best of each one of them and it's going to help you grow faster and grow better, right? So that's one of the things that I, that I bring when, I, when it comes to support. And rest assured, I mean, uh, I'm sure most of you guys provide, if not all, provide Drupal support. There's a bunch of people in the marketplace in Drupal that, that can provide support to those organizations, can provide support for Drupal. So uh, that's, we gotta be prepared to, if your organization does not provide, definitely you can find someone, one of your partners that can help with that too. So we gotta be ready for this first. Uh, there's no support around when it comes to open source and Drupal, right? Because that's one of the first things the competitors will bring. The second one is security, right? I think this is best way, but I, I, a couple weeks ago I heard again I had to, to show them there's no such a thing anymore. The way I see it and, the, and I keep showing them is that it's just with any water web solution, right? I think the site is as secure as your development team, the organization development team that is working for them is skilled. So as, as much as they are skilled, they will be able to provide more secure security, uh, as well as how much the organization is doing their due diligence when putting together a QA team, a security team, and being uh, aware and being very concerned about security all the time. Because there's no such a thing as 100% secure anyways, but uh, you gotta do your homework as an organization. So, but to bring something like open source insecure, PHP is insecure, that's not true anymore. We all know that. Uh, I guess one of the things that, uh, when having those discussions, uh, I, I realized is that PHP is being out there and it's so ubiquitous, uh, so many people doing PHP, that helps with, not helps, but that doesn't help because we're gonna have so many developers, maybe junior developers, and once they put the site out there, they haven't done the proper code, and then there's a, there's a security threat or something on the website, and that doesn't help with our point here, right? So. Um, I think it's a myth because it's just uh, with even if, if it was Java or with those software or proprietary vendors solution, you still have to do your homework to put a site out there, right? And uh, if you don't do it right, you're gonna have the same threat. And I think the other thing is important to bring is about the security team in Drupal. So uh, I don't know if you all, if you guys all know how it works, but uh, it basically they release periodic assessments or periodic announcements on what has which module or if the core needs to be updated. So we guys, we should all subscribe to that if you're not. And uh, they do a hell of a work. There's about 40 people on the team right now. So they basically, they do some pre uh, proactive validations or assessments from time to time, but most of the work is done by everyone, us, telling them that we found a security issue. So they go ahead and they notify the module owner and uh, they work with the module owner to get that fixed. If it's a core, they're gonna work with the core committers to get that fixed and communicate everyone. And then, the developer shop that is working for that organization has to do, as part of their support, has to do uh, the updates necessary to keep that secure. So again, uh, also they, they still bring in that and we gotta be prepared in our sales team. The third one, the third myth that I still see out there is performance. And there's a bunch of debate, uh, don't wanna get into that in terms of Drupal, the SQL queries, etc. But I like to bring to the, to the organization that performs doing well. Yes, we're, we've been able to launch, and there's plenty of cases out there to be able to launch sites that are handling millions of transactions. Uh, 
I haven't done that million level yet, but uh, definitely 5,000 transactions or, 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 or requests, or actually transactions within, uh, within one hour or sometimes 10,000. I guess this one here, what I like to say is uh, internally with our team is with great power comes great responsibility. So Drupal being so flexible and you being able to customize and configure, you gotta, you gotta do your homework as a development team and use the mechanism and, and implement the right way Drupal to make this uh, uh, very well or a very fast site, right? So you can start with a, st a strategy of everything is gonna use Drupal cache, uh, the anonymous Drupal cache, and, we'll, or, and then as we start developing, realize that uh, this piece here cannot be cached by Drupal uh, standard cache. Let's figure out what is the, the performance requirements for this one and try to implement something if really needs and assess that. But uh, as long as we do our homework and use the tools, so we can use varnish, different cache mechanisms, etc., cetera, uh, I think we can build very fast websites. So um, I don't think this is, uh, is this true anymore as long as we do our homework. Um, also something that uh, they brought is about how, I mean, with, the, with, the, with Oracle or Adobe, I can call them depending on, on the contract that I have, I can try to influence what I want in next release, right? And what is, what is that with Drupal? How can I somehow be part of what is coming out of Drupal in the next release? It's open source, nobody owns that. How I, as a large organization, I can influence what I need for next release? I think the first thing is really get uh, the company involved somehow in the community through their development shops or, or themselves, uh, having a more active voice uh, on the issues and, and being able to invest on people uh, working for, for the community somehow. That's the most important thing. So that's one way that you can influence and you can join meetings and can, and can help discussions about where Drupal should be. And the second thing is uh, it's something that I think is, is, very, is very good that came out of uh, this strategy, the large scale Drupal. It's really something wonderful and I think it's a, it's a big opportunity for, for those organizations to really try and expedite what they need to get addressed. So uh, I, I, I tell them as well, well, if you're interested, there's this, this uh, initiative that is happening right now where you guys can help build something faster than just waiting the next release, for example. There is a session specifically, Mike Myers, the lead of this, this initiative, uh, there's a session for that, I guess, Thursday. Uh, so uh, I really recommend you guys try to get a little bit more insights on that too. Because again, they are gonna ask, those large organizations, they're gonna ask that. And finally, within uh, understanding what's going on on the, on the enterprise or, or the competitors, what they're doing, I think web experience, like I said in the beginning, it's something that's out there. It's a need from the brand team, from the CMOs, C, uh, the digital office as well. But I think the, the, the competitors have been using that quite a lot as we see the products being put together. So I think we gotta at least know what is it about so we can right off the bat speak on behalf and, and try to do our homework and understand how Drupal can actually help with those, uh, those requirements. Because uh, again, for, for those two last cases that I have been working, uh, the last one, we had to show a demo of Drupal. We, we built a POC for, those, for the requirements that they shared. Half of the room was IT, the other half was really part of the marketing team. Content authors who eager to know how they can leverage the platform for doing content management by themselves. So right, it's not only IT that was in the room, it was uh, uh, representatives of the, the CMO office or the CM office. So uh, we got a, and, and they brought the subject about, well, how Drupal can, can help with the web experience management. And well, it's the first time, so we gotta be prepared for that. And I'm just gonna touch base about this. There's a large uh, uh, literature on that, but it's basically some main components that I see. And I think Drupal can provide uh, those capabilities, not by itself, sometimes you have to integrate with different components, but it's also part of the beauty of Drupal, I think, being able to be flexible. So, for example, those organizations are, like Adobe would come with Omniture for analytics, but it's part of the bundle, it's part of the solution. With right. Drupal, we can actually connect with Google Analytics, you can connect with Web Trends, you can connect with Omniture as well. So, to some extent, you don't have as part of a built in solution in Drupal, but on the other side, you have freedom, you have flexibility to connect to other things, you're not tied to just one major solution. So I think that's very important for us to, to bring at the table as well. 
So multi-channel management, like managing content, going to mobile, different uh, devices, and to the website as well. Being able to track conversational engagement, so being able to track the blogging, so those sites, what people are ta talking about your brand, um, or even social tools, so to get that information, bring that back to the CMO, to the marketing team, so they can take decisions. Uh, being able to do A-B testing, land page, land page optimization, and work with the marketing team to help them do conversion rate optimization as well. So this is all part of uh, what's coming out of this web experience management. So it's not only providing digital marketing websites, it's really providing a more robust set of tools to help those guys take the decision, right? So um, it's important. Demand generation is more around uh, e uh, email marketing tools, so you can, send, you can reach out to them based on the information that they are collecting. So we talk about Drupal strengths and things that are getting better. Uh, what some things that I saw uh, competitors doing. And with all of that, I think what is last for us is basically uh, really, really make sure that our, pre our sales team, our pre-sales team are doing the basics when it comes to providing a, or a sales pitch for CMS. And uh, we're getting the, the proper support with the communities, right? Leveraging everything that you guys are seeing here today. I think I want to provoke some discussion around that too, where we can try to improve our sales team. We've been doing a, a great work for marketing, I think, which Drupal wasn't so much famous until last couple of years. Even in Brazil, sometimes uh, I ask people like C level, they, they what Drupal, what is Drupal? So there's still a lot of work to do in terms of marketing. But more so as, as important as marketing, we gotta also be prepared for in terms of sales, sales, right? So some some basics is basically something that uh, helps, and uh, most likely the IT group of the organization will come out with that spreadsheet. So that's uh, of course a pragmatic and easy way to assess, right? Putting one by its side, and we, I think, we as a sales team for Drupal, we should we should try and. Uh, and, uh, and recommend doing that and put together a matrix score that is gonna be based on, on what is more important, do some value engineering for, for the marketing team. So there are different par parameters that can be put together, uh, different CMS, <coughs> and it's up to each organization to really put together. But I think we guys, we as a Drupal sales team, we should suggest, recommend putting that together to be a fair fight, right? So let's put everything together, let's put a weight on each one and let's see if Drupal is the right tool for you, right? So that's base, like I said, basics one-on-one, -on -one, but uh, we, we should be able to, and, and I think Drupal is gonna win. If it's, if it's, uh, if it's a CMS, what they're looking for, they're looking for delivering content, delivering a, 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 a great web experience, Drupal is gonna win most of the case, but uh, we gotta be pragmatic about it. We gotta understand the, the business gap, I think, so those organizations, so they have a marketing team which, which has some specific goals, some of them listed here that we ha have seen. So they have some different challenges. They have a history dealing with the, the IT in the organization. Some, there's some friction or something between those departments. And there's also the need for what IT wants, right? So uh, they, they have different goals as well. So by the time again, it's more high level conversation, but we gotta be prepared to see how Drupal is gonna be helping with that, right? So being able to, to convince those guys that Drupal is the right uh, tool for satisfying both groups uh, requirements. I'm gonna rush up a little bit, guys. Uh, so with that in place, try to build the best strategy for pitching those organizations, right? I think one of the things is uh, we should try and tailor Drupal for, for, for that opportunity. It's not just showing uh, the plain flavor of Drupal, uh, definitely not. We should try to get those requirements in the spreadsheet and, and, and spending time, effort on building a, a demo site, a really beautiful one, so we can share with either IT, it's gonna be looking at more under the ground in Drupal, uh, but, uh, but I'll be able to show that to, to the market team as well. So I think it's, it's worth, they're gonna ask anyway, but uh, we gotta have uh, a demo prepared or prepare a more specific demo. So configure Drupal to really satisfy those requirements and, and get the wall effect by the time we're, we're demoing that, right? Um, those guys, the, the Oracle, the, all the other sales team, they do have several demos ready. It's just in a snapshot they would do it. Drupal, we don't have so many demos out there. Uh, and I, I don't think we need to have so many. I think we can do a, a lot of work to improve that, but it's still, 
since every organization is going to have a different requirement, and I'm, I'm talking about Drupal flexibility and being able to be the organization DNA, we have to build a, a POC with the organization phase, I guess. So I think we should spend the time on that. And I think something is, is important too is try to team up uh, with, with us here, with different organizations. So everyone has its specialty, everyone works in a different area. And uh, I think we as a community, we can get the best out of it even during that phase, which is an important phase, which is the technology decision, uh, which, which, which technology those organizations are going to be working with for the next five years, most of them, right? So uh, if we can, let's bring different partners, let's, let's partner, uh, and, and uh, if we're not strong so much in that type of vertical or in that particular area of Drupal, we could work out, I mean, we can all work out together and during this phase, and of course, as we as Drupal wins, have deals together as well for those organizations. I, I don't see why this uh, is not possible, uh, but I like to provoke that uh, discussion as well, even that during that phase. And last but not, but not least, I think we also know. I think it's very important that we know when to give up, right? So, what are the battles that I think we should uh, just? come back home and, and, and realize that uh, we couldn't have won that or we did our best to win. And I, I spent some time on this one. And I think the best thing that I wanted to, you guys to leave is really, if Drupal failed here, I don't think we should be pushing for, continuing to insist on trying to convince them to use Drupal if Drupal is not the right tool for that. I think a lot of the perception around Drupal not being so good for those organizations is due to uh, Drupal not being the right thing for that. So trying to bring Drupal to do anything, to do any type of solution, to try to replace a uh, e-learning solution, to try to replace a more robust commerce solution. Although we can do commerce quite well, there's quite a few modules, but if there's something much bigger, I don't think we should try and, I don't know, do some makeup or whatever to convince people, because I think there are a bunch of websites out there that are not helping the community, Drupal in general, because they were not built for, I mean, we're not supposed to be using Drupal for that, for starters. So I think we should be, again, very pragmatic and realize that and not pursue and just realize, well, that was not the case for Drupal. But if you're confident that, yes, the requirements for this organization, that's it, Drupal is the best one, then you spend a lot of time. But if not, let's just move away and, and go for the next battle, right? So just to wrap up, guys, uh, so no Drupal strengths and what's underway to get better. Try to do some competitive analysis, try to understand what's out there so, uh, so you get more prepared to whatever those guys are gonna be bringing to the table. And really spend time uh, training the sales team. So for those organizations, they want things fast, they want uh, the best of the things, they want you to invest time and effort on this. So uh, if we can try to do that in ahead of the game before being called for the speech, the better, right? We can get more prepared. Because at the end of the day, I think we should uh, have what I, I like to call the Drupal Enterprise or Large Enterprise Sales Team. So every one of us could be prepared to, to help uh, with bringing Drupal to those organizations, which ideally would be this, right? Everyone could be part of a Drupal Enterprise Sales Team. And that would be wonderful. So um, that's yeah, about five minutes. So there's about five minutes for questions. That's what I had, guys. I don't know if you guys have any questions. Feel free to shoot at me. Yep. Besides those, so the question was uh, unfair. Uh, process or unfair uh, initiatives or tasks that they've done or, or something that they, they were not so fair, right? Uh, I think besides those myths, I think they've been pretty fair. Wasn't, I mean, there will be cases where they have relationships already with the sea level, so that's really hard as well. So that's one of the things that uh, for us, uh, it's really hard if there's relationship, there's something more than just being pragmatic about the solution, which I'm not seeing so much happening. But, um, but there was one case, a uh, large enterprise in US, where we were pushing a lot, pushing a lot to try to, to sell Drupal. Drupal was the best solution for them. And then after 
five months, we no seven months realized that uh, the the CTO hated Drupal, and that's why we've been trying showing and, and we didn't have access to the CTO, so we've been trying to use uh, the IT team for that, and wasn't that, that wasn't fair, right? So we couldn't even get an opening to talk to CTO and show this. So no matter what we tried, that wouldn't help. So it wasn't so much something that he, he did was unfair. The competitor did did, but. Um, but that wasn't one of the blocks that we found when trying to, to show Drupal. But as far as competitors, I think they are, they are like I said, they're, they work on their labs. They are, so they're spending a lot of time on being creative on their side, looking at Drupal, what we're doing. So I'm sure there, there are guys here from, from those organizations seeing uh, what we're, we're planning, we're cooking, they're marching, it's all out there anyways. So I, I think they're just getting that and, and building uh, on their solution. But um, I haven't seen anything unfair besides those those FUDs, right, the FUDs. Yep. back again to the major 
and try to look at, I mean, when we get there, there's a lot, all the, outs, the websites already in the platform, whatever the, the old platform. So they know all the requirements that they need to supply or to attend for even bringing group into place. So they, they have the requirements in place already, and they're already putting the roadmap for Google uh, and integrating with the other solutions. So I guess what one of the cases that I, that I, that I worked with, uh, by bringing Drupal into place, that helped with opening their minds to try and experiment different open source solutions mm -hmm. as well. So if they were used to a single sign-on solution for prepare one, so uh, they, they take the opportunity to also migrate to a different to an open source SSO solution. But most of the time, they already know what they need to do. Maybe some, not so much in two days, so they can leverage consultants and service, uh, service to, to do that. But uh, usually, they already know what they, where they want to be. Not so much with Drupal, but uh, with the platform to serve the market. And the market team usually knows what, where, what they want. Not so much in detail, but it's really much. with one of them right now, they're two to six. And uh, it's so they're kind of the elephants so they're the ones of doing a certain migration, especially the way you set up Drupal in the organization could be more hardcore or maybe. But uh, right now we're discussing with one of them how we're gonna move into the not assessing the cost of all the way in the money. But it's a whole process, part of the roadmap of the S we sit down together and show what we want to migrate this. So let's work only on the new side, on the new side, then we choose a different environment and what are the costs associated to have it two different teams as well, two six and two seven teams, and then support. So all those things come into play. But uh, it's a, a slower process to work with the group. Depending on how they set up, right? But uh, it's also depending on you, your team or your as a development shop have full capabilities in place to make this as seamless as possible to look across building the new size. But uh, it's part of their roadmap to try and be uh, in the community. How do you position multi site management in a way you can do it as well? The top level is some of the other vendors. They've got multi site management ready to like be done. They've got a lot of it for multi site management. We've got a first.
So, um, and I, I, I didn't mention the beginning. We are all. I hope you guys. I can see you guys down in Brazil in December. It'll be great to see you guys down there. Our first triple call in South America. And uh, thank you so much. Uh, I'd like to ask you guys to also give feedback in the the session. So either now or later on, that'll be great too. Thank you. Thank you so much, guys.